Hello and welcome to Code Tutorials. In this video, we'll be exploring the Masonry Image Gallery block, which is part of our key blocks for Gutenberg plugin. With this block, you can show off your visuals in galleries with masonry layouts. This page we're on has some examples of what that might look like. The Masonry Image Gallery block can be used to create box storeful with galleries, so it will be easy to integrate with your site design. Moreover, it includes options for setting the display size for each of the images. You'll be able to pick if you want them to be in portrait or landscape orientation, and add hover effects and links if you want to. You can also choose whether to set spaces between the images or to go without. It's up to you. Beyond that, all blocks in the key blocks collection are entirely compatible with each other, making them very easy to combine and create more complex page sections, or add text content to go with the gallery visuals. Overall, numerous customization and stylization options are bundled with the Mason Image Gallery block, and you can use those options to adjust the most minute aspects of your galleries. So, let's take a closer look at what options we can expect and how to use them. Head over to the back end. I created a new page to work in. Now I need to add a masonry image gallery block to this page. Blocks can be added in a couple of ways. One is by clicking on the blue plus sign button in the page header. This will open the block selection. Here you'll see all the blocks you have on your site. The key blocks are easily recognizable by the reddish pink icons. And you can browse through this list to find the block you need. But keep in mind, other than the key blocks collection, the selection you see here includes all the other blocks that are installed and active on your site. That means you'll see Gutenberg blocks here, as well as anything else you may have added. Now, as I said, you can look through this list to find the block you want. Once you do, simply drag and drop it to add it to the page. However, you can also add blocks from within the page. Simply click on this plus sign icon and you'll get a pop-up window with a view of your recently used blocks as well as a search bar above them. I have the masonry gallery underneath, but I'll look for it anyway. I just need to start typing the name. And there, you don't need to know the whole thing precisely. Once the block appears, simply click on it and it will automatically be added to the page. This is what the masonry image gallery block looks like by default. It has three columns with a dummy image shown in each. I'll begin by replacing the dummy images with my own. To do that, we need the options in the Content tab, and then the Items section. We can see that there are three items here. Each represents an image in the gallery, and if we click on one, it opens to reveal additional image-specific options. And the first option allows us to replace the image. I'll delete the dummy one and pick something new from my media library. Just a sec. This is going to be my first gallery image. Select. OK. Next, we can pick the image size. It can be square, landscape, portrait, or huge. For this first image, I'll keep the square setting. Then we have the link field where we can set a URL that will connect this image to any page we want. To use this, we first have to enable custom links. There is an option above. And also, we can't simultaneously have the link and the lightbox pop-up when an image is clicked on. Since I plan on using a lightbox pop-up, which I'll show you a bit later for my gallery, I'll skip the link option. Okay, that's my first item done. I'll quickly customize the other two. Delete. Media library. Select. Okay. I'll keep the sizes square again. And then for the third item, same steps here as well. I'll use this, but for this image, we can see it's displaying the gallery stretched out. That's because its original proportions are more suited to a portrait than the square shape that I have it in now. So I'll change the setting under image size to portrait, and there we go, much nicer. And this is a good example to highlight that, while you can pick the size of each image in your gallery, you should make that setting keeping in mind the original dimensions of the image as that will affect the resulting look. OK, I'm going to add a few more images to my gallery now. You can create more items by clicking on Add Item. There. I'll skip ahead now while I customize two additional items. We've already covered the steps, so there's no need to waste your time by going over them again. And here's my masonry image gallery now. It has five images, or items, in total. 
and I arrange them all to fit well together. Now that that's done, we can consider the other options we have in the content tab. Starting with the first one, number of columns. It's set to three by default, but you can easily increase that number, like so, or decrease it if you want to. Then your gallery would look something like this. I'm going to stick with three columns for my gallery. Next, we have the space between items option. It allows us to adjust how much space we'll have between the images and the gallery. Here, I'll set zero to remove all spaces. We can see that the images are right next to each other now. Following that, we have the columns responsive option. This is where we can set how our gallery will be displayed on different screen widths. The default setting is predefined, and you can stick with it if you don't want to bother with setting things by yourself. But if you do want to make manual adjustments, you can pick custom. That's what I'll do. It allows me to set the number of columns that will be shown on a range of different screen widths. The first two entries are for laptop and MacBook screens. For those, I'll set three columns. Then the next two entries are for tablets. Landscape orientation, where I'll set three, and portrait orientation, where I'll set three again. Finally, we have two fields where we can enter the number of columns for mobile phones when viewed in landscape or portrait orientation. For both of these, I'll set one. That way, the different image sizes won't make a mess of my display, and all the images will be easy to view. Okay. After that, we have the Enable Custom Links option. If we switch this on, we'll be able to use the link field from the Items options. This one, if you recall it. In that case, each image would lead to a target URL that you set. I don't plan to use custom links, but I'll keep this enabled for now while I show you the next option, Image Hover. It allows us to affect the image behavior by adding an animated effect that will appear on Hover. The default setting here is None, so there is no change when we hover over an image. The only thing that happens is the cursor becomes a pointer to show the image is linked or clickable but that's because of the custom links that are still enabled. However, we can set the image to have an animated effect, such as zoom. Then hovering over the image zooms it in. And if you're using a zoom effect, you can pick the zoom origin. The default setting is center, but we can replace that with top, which looks like this, or bottom, which looks like this. Then there's left, which looks like this, and right, which gets us this look. I'll return this to the center while we cover the other available image hover effects. There's zoom out. And with the zoom origin still in the center, this is what it looks like. Then there's move, which creates this effect. We also have the caption info box setting. And for that one, you need to set captions for your images. That's done using an option in the media library. I only have a caption for my first image, and we can see that caption appears within a pop-up box from the image bottom. If you want to use this, make sure to set the captions for all your images. And the same goes for the other image hover effects. With the caption in middle, we get an overlay across the entire image with the caption right in the center. Other than that, there is also the caption follow info setting. With that one, the caption appears in a floating box that follows the cursor. And those are all the settings we have for the image hover effects. I'll set this back to none as I don't want to use this, or the custom links option that's above it. Alright, following this we have the enable lightbox pop-up option. We can see it's already active. To show you what it does, I need to open a live page preview. And before I do that, I'm going to hit update so the gallery I created since the start of this video will be visible in the preview. And I'll click here and open the preview in a new tab. Here we go. With the lightbox pop-up, when I click on an image, it expands, and there's an overlay over the rest of the page. In this view, we also get navigation arrows on the sides, which can be used to go through the entire gallery content. And that's the lightbox pop-up. Let me get back to the page backend. As I consider the lightbox pop-up a useful thing for a gallery to have, I'll keep it enabled. And with that, we covered all the options in the Content tab. The only thing we have left is this Advanced section at the bottom. It contains only one option, the additional CSS classes. This is where you can create a specific class for this element, and then you can use that class and refer to it when making CSS that would style the masonry image gallery block. Okay, 
That was the last thing in the options here, which means we can move on to the next tab. And that's the Style tab. Here, the first option we have is the Image Border Radius. With it, we can curve the sharp corners of our gallery images. If I move the slider and change the default value, we can see how rounded the image corners have gotten. You can increase or decrease the amount of radius depending on the look you want to achieve. However, I want my images to be tucked neatly next to each other, so I'll reset this to get the default value back, which is zero or no radius. Following that, we have the overlay color option. It has this user-friendly color picker where you can easily select whatever color you like for an overlay. And to keep the images visible, make sure to combine the color with a degree of transparency. Once I increase that, the images start to emerge from under the color. Okay, I'll reset this. It's just one idea for a possible design solution. And we have something similar with the overlay hover color option. It works pretty much the same as the overlay color, only now the difference will be visible on hover. So if I set something and hover over an image, the new color shows only on hover. And again, don't forget to set a degree of transparency if you want to keep your images visible on hover. I want something subtle here, so I'll reset the option to clear the changes I made, and then I'll use the hex code input field to set plain white as the overly hover color, and make it pretty transparent while I'm at it. This will create something like a shading effect. Now when I hover, Okay, this image is light colored to begin with, but here's an example. We can see how it seems to get lighter on hover. And that's it. We've gone over all the relevant options for the masonry image gallery block. We do have one tab left, and that's the advanced one. But that's something all blocks have. You'll be able to find options for responsiveness, motion effects, block positioning, background, and so on in there. However, those settings affect blocks as a whole and aren't specific to the masonry image gallery block, so we won't be covering them in this tutorial. Before we finish up, I want to show you one more thing, and that is how to get a full width rather than a box gallery. For that, we need to open the page settings. And then, if we look under templates, we can see the page I've been working in is using the default template. Since my WordPress theme has a default grid of 1300 pixels enabled, that grid has been applied to my page and all its content via the default template. And if I want to have a full width gallery, I need to have a page that allows full width elements, which means I need a full width page template. I will use key full width because that's what I have. The template might have a different name on the WordPress theme you're using, but any full width template you have will do the trick. I'm going to update the page now. And refresh it because once the template change loads, my gallery will stop looking this messed up. And there we go. The same masonry gallery that was previously boxed is now full width. The image order is the same and the proportions and layout look good. Overall, the gallery looks great either way. Still, my plan design has this block as box, so I'll switch the page template back to default template. Okay, and update. Then refresh the page. Alright, here's my gallery again. And this is its finished look. The design I wanted to create is done. All the images are there and they are perfectly stacked together. If you'd like to see other examples of the masonry image gallery now that you know what goes into setting one up, you can go back to the page we started from. There are a variety of examples to be found here. From box to full width galleries, those that use the spaces between the images, as well as those that don't. All of those settings and more are things we learned to make while exploring the masonry image gallery block during the course of this video. Hopefully, now that you've seen how easy it is, you'll start making masonry galleries for your site. And if there's something that remains unclear, or if you have any questions after watching this video, please drop us a line in the comment section below. Also, we'd love to hear from you if you have any comments or suggestions you'd like to make. Finally, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new tutorials and guides. Thank you for watching.